we are going to be making homemade candles in reusable containers. Awesome. So with fresh beeswax. So, um, so I think step one would be to decide what kind of candle holder you want to use. I encourage you to go to your local thrift stop, shop or um, maybe you have neat teacups or something like that taking space in your house that you thought would, what are you ever going to use them for? Well, this could be what you could use them for. So some other examples of containers could be a little tin or an old um, candle holder. Possibly like a little pottery piece. So these are some of the options. So once you've decided on your container, just note that the amount of wax you'll be working with is about six to eight ounces, which takes up about half a cup to three quarters of a cup of water. So you can test your container uh, if the size of it and how full it's going to be if you choose to have two smaller containers or one larger one that's up to you. You'll have enough wick to, to make two if you choose um, or you can do one larger one and that would hold about three quarter cup of water. So you can test the volume of your container that way. So once you have your container selected, um, we have to melt the wax. So what I have set up here is just a pot of water on a little burner. Um, and I filled it about an inch or two worth of water. And I'm just sacrificing my kitchen glass measuring cup, but you can use something recyclable like a tin can or a mason jar, a wide mouth mason jar, because you will have some residual wax um, that stays on the container. So if you don't want to ruin your thing or spend a lot of time scrubbing wax out, use something disposable, but I sacrifice that because it's easy to pour. Um, and then we will receive your beeswax. You might receive something that looks a little bit different than this. This is a one ounce wax brick, um, but they come in two ounces or three ounce wax uh, chunks. So it just depends on the size you have. Make sure that it can all fit in your container. You may need to add them in one or two at a time just as they melt and then you can add more. So I'll place these in, start my hot water up and this, uh, the double boiler system will prevent the wax from um, getting overheated and burning uh, while it will still cause it to melt. So we never want to bring the wax to a boil, but uh, the water itself will come to a boil. And that so our wax is pretty much melted. Um, we have a, um, yeah, about, I think this is about six ounces of wax here. Now, I would encourage you to resist the urge to stir it. Um, you want to do that, but the more you stir, the more wax is going to end up on your stirring implement. You're going to lose it and not be able to use it in your candle. So it doesn't need to be stirred. Maybe once or twice use something disposable again. Don't use a finger. It's going to be hot. Um, <laughs> so once your wax has completely melted, you can turn down your element just to keep it warm as we may return the, the liquid wax back to the pot to keep it liquid, but it doesn't need to be boiling like crazy. But while it has been melting, we need to set up our candle wicks. Okay, so you should have in your packages um, a piece of wick as well as a number of small metal wick holders. So the first thing to note is that you're probably not going to need all of this wick for one candle, but uh, for the First stage, keep it long um, so that you can measure it afterwards, but uh, it'll be easier for you to thread through your holder um, when it's full length. Um, the other thing to note is that wicks, especially a square braided wick, have an up and a down. So it's not the end of the world if you put it upside down, but it will burn better if it's the correct way. So examine your wick and you can kind of see that there's a bit of a braid pattern and the braid pattern either makes V's or Y's stretching up, or if you put it upside down, it's upside down V's or Y's. So just think of it that your candle wick wants to open up to the top of the candle. So you want the V's to be opening up towards the top of your candle, so the bottom of the V would be the bottom of the wick. So that's how we're going to want to feed it through the holder. 
So like I said, not the end of the world if you mess that up, but do your best to find the V. There's Because this is a square braid, there are multiple sides, but one of the sides will be a dominant side and it will be a little bit more obvious. So this is my wick. This is my bottom end. So it's I find it easier to feed the wick through the wick holder from the bottom side. So the top of my wick, I'm going to put through the bottom so that it comes through towards the top of the wick holder. So I just use the pointy end of a dowel. You can use the pointy end of a paper clip or a needle or whatever it is that uh, you think will work. This is a fairly wide wick. I selected a um, number three wick for this project as you need to have a wick large enough that it will burn or melt the wax fully in your candle holder. So I would assume most teacups or holders like this would have roughly about a three inch opening. Therefore, I give a number three wick. So if you're making smaller candles, narrow taper candles, they would use a thinner grade wick. Um, even wider candles, um, it goes wicks go up to about an eight, um, or you do a multi wick candle in that case. So, so I will just take the dowel and shove my little wick ends in through as best I can, and they'll start coming out the top, and I will just grab that and pull it through. So you might want to use needle nose pliers or something like that if you don't have fingernails like I do, um, whatever you need to make that happen. So this is where I would measure um, my candle to see how much wick I want to use per candle. So if you're just making the one or if you're going to make multiple small ones, you'll want to measure that out. So it can be fairly rough. Make sure you leave yourself some extra. So in, uh, in some cases we're going to be tying a knot uh, or we're going to be wrapping the wick around a dowel and you'll see those examples. Um, you'll want to have at least an inch or even more excess wick above the top of your candle to ensure you have enough wick that you're not running out. So give yourself lots to work with. Um, so I would just kind of put the holder to the bottom of the teacup and take a look there. I have at least an inch or more over the top of the teacup that should be sufficient um, for my candle here. So I know that's where I'm going to be good. And this is where you will need some sort of plier like a needle nose or a, a larger plier to pinch that wick in the wick holder. And I will just pinch that into the holder. And now it won't fall through anymore. It might make the holder a little bit of a boat if you can. Try to flatten that so it doesn't uh, sit wonky in the bottom of your candle holder later. And cut the excess off. And if there's a little bit there, you mean try to cut it as flush as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, to use a dowel. So what I did here was just make the wick extra long. Again, you can dip the bottom into the hot liquid wax, bring it to the center of your candle holder, push down firmly so that it kind of glues itself. And once that's fairly firm, give it a 30 seconds or so to cool down. You can tie the wick around the dowel and try to get it as firm and snug as possible so that again, the wick stays centered in the holder but you don't want to pull it off the bottom of the candle holder. And so again, you can just place it like that so it stays centered and you can move it around while you pour your wax. And rather than tying, if you find you're not getting it tight enough, is just to do something very similar where you um, have a long wick, you've glued it to the bottom of your holder um, with the hot wax, and then you can just wrap the excess wick around and then roll it nice and tight and use something like a clothespin or a paper clip to hold it in place. Now that my wax is liquid, and it's time to pour the candles. There's going to be quite a bit of steam in from your double boiler system here and your holder, your melter pot uh, might actually be fairly hot. 
Safety first. I have a pair of, these are welding gloves, but I think any kind of leather glove or something like that, even an oven mitt if it's not too cumbersome will work. But these have clearly been used for making candles before. They're nicely covered in wax, but that allows me to safely pick up the hot container. This is also when you may want to have lined your countertop with paper or like parchment paper or newspaper or whatever. In case of a drip or two, you don't have to be filing wax off your countertop. Probably wouldn't damage it, but better safe than sorry. I have a nice stainless top here uh, that I use for this, so I'm not as worried. But but pouring the hot wax into the candle holders. Um, so you just want to pour kind of near the center. Try not to get it on the sides of the container too much, um, just so that if, it, if the container is clear, it might make streaks and stuff like that that you can see. So try to pour in the center of the container. And one of the key things is to not pour the whole candle. So you want to leave a little bit of space yet. Um, as the wax cools and uh, solidifies, it may pull away from the side of the container and potentially crack. So if that does happen, we retain a little bit of the liquid wax in order to pour a second layer that'll look finished and good for final product. So I always uh, just don't fill it quite full, but then retain some of that liquid wax to top up. So we'll pour second part onto that or first part onto that. And if, there, if you should have a little bit of liquid wax left, return it to your double boiler. Keep liquid again, it doesn't have to be on the full boil, it can just be kept warm to keep the wax liquid. The wax should set in about, in a container this size, probably in about 20 minutes. Um, another key thing is don't try to speed that process up. The quicker it cools, the more likely it will pull from the side and crack. So let it cool at room temperature and let it do its thing. If you slosh the container or try to put it in the fridge, you'll probably have worse results than if you didn't. So, so now that the candles have had a chance to set uh, a little bit, uh, the wax has hardened. For the most part, it's still fairly warm and soft, but uh, so you don't want to be sticking your finger in it, but uh, the wax has hardened. As you can see, sometimes it will pull away from the side of the candle holder or develop a small crack. This one here looks to have set quite nicely. Um, my concern, it's not a concern, but is that you'll see now when we pour the rest of it, you may see a little bit of a separation line because it's a clear container. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of see what that looks like, but we will grab a remaining liquid wax from the double boiler there and pour the rest of this. So again, you want to have at least about a centimeter of wick um, to, to be able to light. So this one, because we had the wick rolled up, we'll have that extra centimeter, even though it's getting quite close to the dowel, I can pour it fairly full and still have that extra wick. This one, um, same thing when we untie the knot, just depends on how full you want to fill it really. And how much wax you still have available. So we'll pour the second layer in here, it might fill a few voids and cracks along the way. And I'll fill that one about that full. And this little one here, we'll do the same thing, we'll have a few little bubbles. And that should leave a nice, perfect finish so that the candle looks presentable. Um, the option if your candle does have quite a you know line in it um, due to the second pouring uh, is I've done this where I've just added a little bow or a little embellishment kind of cover some of that up makes it look cute and quaint but then you still have that nice smooth finish on the top of your candle without any cracks or anything like that.